Hello Fortnite fans, Nubis here. I'm gonna be your pilot today. Welcome to Frosty Flights. Frosty's a great location, so please make sure that you are securely buckled in your seat as we take off into game number one. Despite having landed at Frosty many times before in the past, I didn't really know where to drop into in game one. Frosty's surrounded by a lot of elevated land, which makes it pretty hard to drop into where you want to. The first few games of 100 drops is always a lot of experimentation anyway, but you'll see pretty soon that landing at Frosty gets me tons of wins. But in game one, I left Frosty with some pretty lackluster loot. I haven't landed here consistently in about five years. As with every other game in this video, I left with a plane and did some supply drop hunting. Looks like someone else had the same idea, but I'm wearing the better version of Link, so it's okay. Staying here too long brought a lot of attention on myself, but this person's wearing a glow in the dark skin so at least I won't be able to lose track of her. I made it to the final circle, which is going to be a pretty common theme. Like I said, I get a lot of wins in this video. Winning game one would be a first for me, but unfortunately it's not going to happen this time because I got sniped pretty bad. And then I got sniped again, taking third place. Kind of messed up my drop into Frosty in game two. It's okay. I'm alone, I think. Thankfully though, the loot was instantly amazing out of Frosty this time. Cool, I got what I need. Now I can leave. Most games at Frosty are going to go pretty much like this one. Though most games weren't quite as lucky as this. Two supply drops unnoticed at Tilted. That's crazy. One downside I immediately noticed about Frosty though is that it's pretty terrible for materials. So I took a layover into bot country for some wood. This is one of the many spots on the map I had to learn to take refuge in in this hunter drops. Unfortunately, it wasn't too much of a refuge in this game because I got sniped, but thankfully there was also a little zenith there to act as my personal med kit. But then not too far after that, I got done in by someone who was a lot cooler than me. That was a pretty clean kill on his part. This dude looks like he knows how to fly a plane. Great skin to drop into frosty flights with. No, he sure can fly a plane into the final circle even. Yeah, I lost. Looked like a cold bus at Frosty in game four, but evidently it was hot. It's nice to have some action sometimes though. I'm gonna miss games like these later. I did make it to the final circle again. It's implied, but I still didn't win. It'll happen soon, I promise. I was alone in Frosty flights in game five. Who the hell are you? Bro, get out of here. I'm trying to talk. I was never alone in the first place. I didn't see this Lynx land at the hangars. Well, now I'm alone at Frosty. So at least I killed a guy who wasn't unarmed. But would you look at that? Top three with a plane. I knocked this guy down and he deployed his glider a little too early. Don't do this, kids. Oh, how cute. Look at him. Honestly, I wanted to prolong this a little bit. I just didn't expect them to go down that easy. Hey, first win in game five. I've done worse. Not entirely sure how much I trust this guy to fly a plane. I do trust him to bludgeon unarmed civilians, though that's kind of his vibe. Circle finale in a plane. I was popping some shots at the other guys when I got sniped. Classic. Don't fear, though. I'm doing the exact same thing in game seven. Made it to the final circle with no kills, and it would stay that way. Flying around in pretty much the exact same circle as last game, I got a plane in a 1v1. He was pretty good at the game, but I just kept hammering on damage with my gold AK and pump until he was lost in the storm for a zero kill win. I had some competition in Frosty Flights in Game 9. Barely. But you know, I'll take what I can get here. Not a lot of people come to Frosty Flights. Crackshot's Cabin is a great place to go after Frosty if the snow's in the zone. But this time, Santa didn't get me anything on my list. It's still surrounded by a ton of trees, though, so this time I left with Max Wood. I lost a dogfight for my plane, so it looks like we're on foot for this game. Even on foot, though, I still made it to the final circle. Even got a kill on this ice skating default. In the end, the zone was closing around the frozen remains of Greasy Grove. Both me and the other player had the same idea to get on top of the big iceberg at the same time. He had much better loot, but I had a better peak, so I won the game for two in a row. This also proves that I can in fact get wins without planes. Please shut up. Sometimes when the zone is really far away from Frosty, your only option for safe mats is the rock garden next to Wailing Woods. Well, this video is coming out there in season eight, so this place doesn't exist anymore, but you get the point. As I was busy farming, a lynx tried to hijack my plane. I put her down. Someone shot me while I was killing her, but then someone else shot at them. I killed both of them. I ran into Slush Dude, probably recording a video. His videos are great, but he didn't let me join in on the sky base. And also my internet crapped out. I then got into a dogfight near Dusty and I killed the planeless man. In the final circle, Slush was still trying to get a sky base win, but I kept shooting him down because I was vindictive about him shooting at me. I killed the only other guy besides him, and then I missed a snipe that could have won me the game, and then I missed a shotgun shot that also could have won me the game. I guess three in a row just wasn't meant to be. In game number 11, I made it to the final circle with zero kills and very ungood loot. I died trying to upgrade it. In game 12, I tried to plane stall off the side of the map on the final circle and got exactly what I deserved. In game 13, I got a gold pump and a minigun off spawn and used it to decimate my only competition at Frosty Flights. I also discovered the mystery of the strange disappearing chest that gets destroyed when you break this random shelf for some reason. I of course made it into the final circle with my plane where I got engaged in a build fight with this fish who probably should have stayed in the ocean. Well, thanks for the rocket launcher. That thing's pretty rare in season seven. With three people left, I got attacked by a lynx with a minigun, but I minigunned a little bit harder, and she couldn't take the 12 7 damage shots I threw at her. In the end, I had so many more mats than the other guy that I could get into better positioning without a worry in the world, and I let the minigun guide me to victory. You know how it goes, praise be upon the minigun, etc, etc. Game 14's very hot bus into frosty flights, and it was here this Zenith discovered the chemical 
weapons this lab's been working on for years. He managed to escape, that's why there should always be a plan B. Found a little default in disguise romping around outside the lab. I would have let him go, but he had a spaz. Sorry, I need that. Then as I was preparing to leave, I got attacked by an actual default with a minigun. Again, I would have let you go, but you have a gun I really want. I don't make the rules, sorry. Anyway, everything's going great. It's a very tight final zone with six people, but I'm keeping my plane as far as I can get it. Once my plane's finally destroyed, I'm put in a pretty bad position, but I do manage to poke a Lynx run into Storm to get back to full health. I try my best to keep height with three people left, but I made the dumb decision of jumping off the build fight that I was squarely on top of. I probably would have won had I not done that, but I got sandwiched. You live and learn. Whatever. I guess. Game 15, I dropped into Frosty, got one clean kill, and left. That's how most games go at the start. One of my favorite spots for Matt's early on was the Cactus Patch by Paradise Palms. It's a long flight, but it's good secure wood if you can get to it safely. This game, however, I was very rudely interrupted while gathering my materials. I killed him, but I used all my wood, so all the farming was for nothing. It's whatever, I just got my mats up in Fatal Fields instead. Yet another great spot. And by the time I was done, it was a 1v1, so I was ready to win the game. God had other plans for me, though. The guy I was up against had 18 kills. Looks like someone needs to learn that the age of consent is the same number as their kill count. This is probably the last time you'll ever catch me wearing Renegade Raider, but she has the aviator hat, you know, frosty flights, whatever, it kind of works. Usually if I wore the skin, I'd drop somewhere cool and sweaty, like tilted, but I'm stuck at frosty for another 84 game, so here I am. I was looting peacefully when a plane attempted to make an unauthorized landing at frosty flights, so I gave him a full body cavity search. I got up my mats at Crackshot's cabin and then flew to Viking Village, where I found a battle pass boy that needed to be put down. Now with a minigun with max bullets, I used its anti-aircraft capabilities to destroy the plane of the only other person in the match. I then showed him my own plane, but he poked me a little bit so I flew out. He got me pretty low with a nice deagle shot, but I knew that all I needed to win was to just keep height and poke him for small amounts of damage, until they add up to large amounts of damage, and he dies. Alright, back into the vault you go, Renegade, I'm never using you again. In game 17, I accidentally marked the wrong location and almost dropped Happy Hamlet. I don't know if I've ever failed to drop into a location this hard before, it's kind of embarrassing. Despite the bad drop though, I was able to safely make it into the final circle. I was very scared of the last two players because I knew they were way better than me. Once they finished fighting, I jumped in, destroyed their campfire, and grabbed height. I kept it the best I could so I could try and stay out of one pump radius. Eventually, he managed to box me in and hit me with a trap, but I danced around the fight with my immense amount of mats and gliders. I was then able to keep height for the rest of the fight and eventually take him down. I feel good about that game, but I want some more kills, so I'm gonna get some in game 18. After caving in the head of that Nog Ops, I default danced my way up to Fatal Fields for some materials. And of course, I sacrificed this noob to the gods for a plentiful harvest. Next stop was the Cactus Patch, but there was already another plane there that I needed to fight to prove my worthiness. Oh, I proved my worthiness, alright, but I didn't actually kill him till a good while later. Oh, the bloodshed was not over. I kamikazed into this fight and hit him with the double kill. That is definitely one of my favorite clips that I've ever gotten. Definitely in the top 10. I was just out here in this game keying everyone I saw with absolutely zero mercy. In the end, the final guy was a massive noob, and I really wanted to get a win with the turret. I've never even really gotten a kill with the thing. I never use it. But the angles are just not in my favor, and eventually he just died to the storm. I do not care though, that's probably one of my favorite games of all time. Three in a row too. Alright, I definitely need to speed up the pacing, I'm yapping a bit too much. I just get so many wins in this video, man, it's insane. I was enticed by the thought of four in a row, but I ended up grabbing second place to this guy with 13 kills. I probably shouldn't have worn a skin based on DJ Yonder, come to think of it. The economy's going in the shitter, no one wants to work anymore, even the guns. It would be really awesome if you did more than 18 damage. That would be great. As unbelievable as it may be sometimes, Era does not have AI bots. Every single person you kill is a human being with thoughts, feelings, emotions, and a family that probably loves them. The only way to know for sure if someone's family loves them is if they're wearing the Dynamo skin, because in that case, they 100% don't. Game 22, I once again messed up my drop pretty badly. It's okay, I made it to Frosty later, you didn't see that. And I am using my glider, so technically I am dropping into Frosty flights. Just shut up. When I left, I ran into a guy who was carrying just way too many clingers. I didn't even know you could carry that much. He must have had like three slots full of clingers. I mean, like, he did not stop. It's honestly, like, genuinely impressive. This is 100 drops frosty flights, so you know I made it to the final circle with a plane. I saw an opportunity to ram someone with my plane who was running from the storm and badly damaged. I did, but now I'm stuck on the wrong side of the zone and getting shot at. In the final build fight, I got trapped in twice, but used my patron state, the minigun, to break out both times. It was a long, fun, and fair fight, but eventually I was able to get up over him, take my shot, and win the game. Game 23, the final circle was ending around Happy Hamlet, so I was just chilling around the snow biome with some absolutely god tier loot. Like usual, in this game I played positioning, if, if that's what you can call this. Both of the last players were probably better than me, but it doesn't matter because I killed them both. Let's go another back to back, but it doesn't end there. Game 24 was a really good duo win with Alfred Jackson, but uh, the recording was really fucked up and I can't import it into Premiere. So, you're gonna just have to believe me on this. It's a win. It's in the logs. It's there. In game 25, I showed this pathetic stage one calamity outside of Salty Springs why she should do her challenges. And then, I got sniped. Oh. Game 26, made it to the top three with a plane and then died to a guy with nine kills. 
many such cases. Game 27 was strikingly similar, except it didn't even make it as far. And it's a goddamn dynamo. I'm saying your mother doesn't love you. In game 28, I got pummeled by a minigun while trying to park my plane. The pop filter does not like that line. I tried to show him my own minigun, but it serves me right for all the dirty minigun kills I've gotten over the years. Game 29 started off by getting brutally attacked by a violent gang. The worst thing about Frosty is definitely the lack of materials. Having to go somewhere completely different for any decent materials isn't great, especially when sometimes the best spot is across the entire map. I had zero peace in my play in this game. Picked up three kills in this random patch of woods when I was just trying to get to the cactus patch. And even when I got another plane in the final zone, I was attacked by someone else in the turtle. What are you even doing there? In the final zone, I just played positioning like I always do, because it works. While the other two players fought, I was moving, and I knew they'd get caught at the bottom of the mountain, sealing their fate. So yeah, like I said, it works. In game 30, I saw a guy in the kill feed named Quincy Boxed You. I celebrated when he died because there ain't no way in a million years I'm dying to a Fortnite nerd named fucking Quincy. I dive bombed the bushy boy and took him out of his planter to make this game a 1v1. Got into a little build fight, but was ultimately only doing this to get him trapped on the bad side of the zone while I used my rift to go. Then it played out pretty much just like last game. He got stuck in the storm trying to push towards me, and I won without even killing him. He hit my plane with his minigun, I showed him my minigun, he showed me his spaz. I lost. I can always respect another minigunner though. I had to help my mom hang a TV, so I was AFK for quite a bit in game 32. As soon as I came back, there was someone building up to where I was. They were thankfully a pretty easy kill. Another default tried to shoot at me while I was making my escape, but I disposed of them too. And then I got killed by someone way better than me. The circle of life is forever ongoing. It repeats millennia after millennia until the end of time. I wore like a dark, fucked up version of Bright Bomber. <laughs> Just a glimpse into my dark reality. A full stare into my twisted perspective would make most simply go insane. This entire game, I watched a man in the kill feed obliterate the entire lobby. He must have had like 20 kills by now. And now I'm in a 1v1 with him. Even though he was obviously immensely better than me though, I actually managed to put up a good fight. And eventually I shot him down and pumped him for the win. That is absolutely not how I expected this game to go. I was really expecting to die horribly like all the others. And hey, even though it's a one kill win, that one kill probably counted for like five difficulty. I attempted to drop into the ocean in game 34, but accidentally landed at Frosty Flights. Yuck. Well, if I'm gonna be on the dirty ground, I might as well soak it in the blood of the sky's defaults. Also, might as well get accustomed to the traditional dress. Don't underestimate the bush lifestyle. I was able to kill this driftboarding calamity, and she didn't even know what hit her. Cutting to the end, it's a 1v1, I'm in a plane. I dive bomb the last player and sent her flying into the air for my win. I didn't even get shot once. In game 35, the final circle was ended up on the spire, and I was not on top of it. In game 36, I got destroyed by a guy with a gray tech because my shotgun decided it didn't want to pull out, just like your dad. And then I died trying to pick up the only thing that would give me hope. Still repping the soccer skin in game 37, and I'm showing it by killing noobs with no remorse. Made my way up to Polar Peak where I killed a guy who clearly didn't know how to loot it effectively. There were six people left in this final circle, and for some reason, every single one of them was shooting at me. And then I got sniped by a renegade raider. I love Fortnite. Game 38 started off with a nice family-friendly plane hijacking. I may have outplayed that galaxy, but this guy summarily outplayed me. I haven't gone more than four games without a win in this video yet, so it seems like I'm due one. There are five people left in this moving zone. These people need to chill out for real. I just hammered on as much damage to as much people as possible, and eventually everyone died except me, and I won. What an anticlimactic ending. In game 40, I died to a guy with 19 kills. Ooh, your edits are so cool. I bet you have a harm of women all over your dick, dude. Get a life. In game 41, I killed a couple of noobs just so I could feel something. Made it to the final zone outside of Tilted Towers. One of them was decent, and the other one was horrible. I hammered on damage to both of them and kept good position. The half decent guy hit me pretty hard but died to fall damage. With the squin, it kind of looks like I killed him. Then the other guy rifted, none of my shots hit because the bloom was not in my favor, and he died to the zone while gliding. Whatever, I'll take another win. What is that, 16? I already have the amount of wins that I consider good for 100 jobs, and we're only 40 games in. That's pretty cool. You know, sometimes it's incredible just how insanely annoying every single person in this game is. In game 43, I left Frosty and found Polar mostly unlooted. For some reason, people do not know how to loot this place. It's a disgrace. Well, I found who looted it. it explains a lot. Last guy was fairly good, but it was a pretty fair fight. Good win. In game 44, I got killed by a guy on a driftboard with balloons and a minigun. Big respect, honestly, that's cool as hell. And in game 45, I spent my life savings on a gold pump. This better be worth it. It was. In game 46, I was too good, so I got kicked by the anti-cheat. I didn't get any kills in that quote-unquote game anyway, so I'm rebooting it. Middlefields is definitely my favorite spot to go after leaving Frosty for materials, but in this game, I was attacked before I could land my plane. But unlucky for him, I also killed him before I could land my plane. The attacks didn't stop there, so I showed them the power of the X4 Stormwing. I missed this thing. I don't even know if I need to farm Mads and Fatal anymore. All this murder is gonna get me the same thing. By the time there were 11 people left, I had amassed five kills and was about to turn it into six with this guy going for a supply drop. Despite his good loot and good skin, went down easy to my defaulty power. And in the desert, I got into a build fight with this calamity for kill number seven. My belly full of blood and with everything I needed to win, I got sniped by a zenith in a bush for his only kill. 
Uh, at least game 47 isn't the worst game in this video, but it's up there. There are planes everywhere. What is happening? I shot this guy from fucking ages away. It's almost 300 meters. And I did eventually kill that lynx I was fighting earlier. I had good movement into the storm, but I was sniped for most of my health. With no healing items and quickly depleting mats, we both only had one shot to take, and he hit it. Game 49 literally has no notes, and for good reason. It's not that good. Game 50 was once again a very standard game at a frosty, made it to the top 10 with a plane. And in a 1v1 against someone who has clearly played a lot more than me, I lost. Obviously. I don't want to sound super negative about Frosty. I really do love this location. It's just kind of a bot country situation where there's not a lot of early game action, so it's not super fun to drop into consecutively. And the thing about games where you don't get a lot of action is when you die, it just kind of feels like a waste of time. I played on European servers for game 51 because NA was kind of dead at this time. I did okay. I got to a 1v1, but the last guy was a nerd I couldn't fight on zero ping, let alone 100. I left. I feel no shame about it. But yeah, don't get me wrong. I love frosty flights. On a similar note, if you love my videos, you should consider subscribing, maybe. A plane tried to give me some business in Polar Peak, but I minigunned him good and swiftly sent him back to the afterlife. In the final circle, as always, and just look at my loot. Oh my god. It's pretty hard to lose when you're in a 1v1 with literally perfect loot, but one way to do it is by rocketing yourself in the storm. Yeah, that one hurt pretty bad. Don't worry, I'll make it up in game 53. Final circle with the Honda Civic. I'm feeling pretty good. Sniped this sergeant winner down to 50 health, and he subsequently died to the storm. I'm gonna count that as a kill. Then I just kept position and height like I always do, and I won easily. Unfortunately though, game 54 wasn't so good. In game 55, I'm defaulting around frosty flights and this galaxy just boogie bombed himself. Nice play, you get a gold star for trying. Final circle is closing around frosty flights, I always like getting a win in the location I'm dropping. But this Nogops had 15 kills, I guess it wasn't happening this time. I went AFK in the open in game 56 and this guy stumbled across me. I still killed him, that's pretty embarrassing, I bet he's bringing me up in therapy. Later got into a fight outside this expedition outpost and clapped him. That fight attracted a whole bunch of other people though, and it's funny how I didn't grab the spaz even though that is specifically what I went down to get. And that mistake would cost me my life. In game 57 I fought with this man over the forest of bot country and I walked away with the spaz. Now I'm in the final circle with a plane and the final guy is not that good at the game. It was effortless. In game 58, there was actual competition at Frosty Flights, and I'm not gonna lie, I am so not used to that. And game 59 is the worst game in this entire video. Yeah, 49th place. That's not super bad, but it's also not great, especially for Frosty Flights. In game 60, I at least made it out of Frosty alive, but you know, you win some, you lose some, and this time I lost some. In game 61, I made it to the final circle with zero kills. The last guy was supremely better than me, it happens most times, but left with five health and no hope, he missed the only shot he needed to win, and I hit mine. Sometimes those one kill wins feel the best. Couldn't find anything better than a green tag for the life of me in game 62. I just survived as long as I could, but going against a spaz in an RPG who could hit me before I could even react. In Snobby Shores Game 63, I shot a man out of the sky, but the people who live here can afford private security, so I was quickly taken out. In Game 64, I hit this absolutely insane snipe, which unfortunately didn't kill him. And that's all you get to see of Game 64. We're moving on. In Game 65, Valley Jax was in my game, so it was my life mission to kill him. I didn't, but I killed the default that killed him. Honestly, I have no idea what the hell was going on in this game. There are planes everywhere, and I hijacked this tomato man's plane to revoke his pilot's license. I told you earlier I don't trust him. Despite all the chaos and the fact that I lost, this was still a very, very fun game. In game 66, I'm still looking to kill Ali Jax. I chased him across the entire map, but he had a spaz. In game 67, I'm so sorry I'm not dropping Frosty Flights, but you don't understand. I need to kill him. And after 200 drops videos and a minigun battle, I finally killed him. As for not dropping Frosty, it's okay. I was banned. Did some unspeakable things to a moderator to get him banned for game 68. I minigunned a man for every piece of loot I could ever wish for. Then, because I landed at Frosty Flights, I made it to a 1v1. I cowered in fear from cold. He's a very scary trick shitter. But after a long and intense battle, Tim Skibbity Sweeney blessed me, and he died to fall damage. In game 69, I made it out of Frosty Flights in order to pulverize my friend Nam in the middle of bot country. Low on health, I made it over to Loot Lake to heal with a campfire. But instead of letting me heal peacefully, I was barraged by an Ice King in a plane. I called him a very unkind word before sending him to hell where he belongs. No one was leaving me alone in this match. They all wanted to 69 with me. Then as I was gliding away in the final circle, Dr. Fun Times penetrated me with his bullets. In game 70, I engaged in a battle I definitely shouldn't have. Then I was brutally murdered, war crime style. In game 71, I made it out of Frosty with two quick kills and made it over to Polar. I stayed in Polar till the very end, until I got sandwiched and then sniped. In game 72, I was awarded a gold spaz by this very kind codename Elf. And by the time I got the drop on this Lynx, I had perfect loot. Out by Lazy Lynx, I was challenged to a dogfight. I'm way too good at these, you will lose every single time. His will to live was strong. I can risk 
respect that. It just wasn't stronger than my shotgun. Then immediately after killing him, yet another plane tried me. His skills outside the plane were a little better. He almost had me there. But he got distracted by someone else, and that gave me the chance to end both of them. I think I spooked him a little too much. He looks traumatized. Now that season seven's over, I can actually share this strategy that I used towards the end of this 100 drops to stall my plane for even longer. If you just spammed the air brake button over and over, your plane would be completely silent. It wouldn't make any noise to anyone on the ground. They wouldn't be able to tell that you're even there without looking up. So at the end of this game, I just flew around the final circle completely undetectable while the other two players fought each other. And once the zone was too small for my plane, I hopped out with perfect mats in perfect position. And I used all that to finish both of the last players left with one rocket. That might just be the coolest win I've ever gotten in my life. That was awesome. Some naughty teamers destroyed my plane in game 73, so I destroyed one of them in return. Back in the final circle, looking for that back-to-back. -back. I haven't got one in a while. The last guy clearly didn't have gliders, but he was way up high with the storm encroaching on him, so I just kept a little bit of pressure on with the minigun and won the game easily. Game 74 was just a busy day in frosty flights, for some reason. In game 75, I flew my way all the way to a 1v1, but then as soon as I jumped out of my plane, I got instantly obliterated. Well, I thought my notes were exaggerating. That really was instant. In game 76, I was about to escape frosty flights when I got attacked by the mysterious and elusive giant nerd. Game 77, I hot-dropped Frosty and got away with a clean kill. Later, I dive-bombed at Chris, she didn't even know what hit her. And then the server died. Ah, oh, that was looking good for me. Frosty was empty in game 78, except for the guy that made it not empty. Rotated over to Polar like I always do when it's in the zone, and found a guy with a spaz, because he landed at Polar. The lag almost had me, but I somehow made it out on top. Almost got skill checked by a dude rocking up on a driftboard, but he got destroyed by a plane. I then snuck up on the dude that killed him and pumped him in the face. He died to fall damage, though. Shh. In the final zone, did some light minigunning and doinked the last two players with my AK for the win. Game 79 certainly happened. Picked up two kills in Frosty Flights Game 80 for all the loot I could ever need. My girlfriend brought me food, so I was just kind of rushing to get to the end of this game. And in a 1v1, none of my shots decided to hit for, like, any damage. Whatever, I doubt he's in a happy relationship. Game 80 owns some squads with Allie Jax and Simon. Simon died off the bat because he has a heavy skill issue. Allie Jax also died later, which left me in a 3v1 situation. I can't often clutch out squad wins on my own, but I'm gonna have to try. I took out two of the three in very quick succession, then hit the third one pretty heavy. And from there, it was very easy. He was trying to res in my box. Game 82, everyone's alive and we're having a grand old time doing some flyby shootings. Just like last time, we were dominating the lobby and even soccer skins were bowing to us. Oh lord, it looks like it's just gonna be me again. Simon died for good again because of his massive skill issue, but I was able to get Hallowed Stone back up for a 2v3. And with the power of teamwork, I distracted the last guy while Hallowed Stone took him out for the back-to-back -back squad win. In game 83, I did not mean to deploy my glider there. That cost me my life. Ugh. I spent the entirety of game 84 farming materials, but I didn't really get to use any of them because as soon as I killed a guy, the server crashed. Yeah, don't mind him, he's just going on a walk to see his childhood dog Fido. Starting off game 85 by no scoping this poor stage 1 zenith. Later out by the ruins of Greasy got into a fight with a huge greasy dork. He used up all my resources, but I still killed him. Embarrassing. In the final circle, I kamikaze this ice king that took far too long to kill and stole his gold spaz. I accidentally didn't grab his scar though, so I just had to rely on one sniper shot to give me some confidence. That gave me the confidence I needed to grab height and let him get lost in the storm for my win. In game 86, I silently flew my way to a 1v1. Then I dive-bombed the last guy and scared him so much he jumped directly into a trap and died. <laughs> okay. I don't know how you mess up that bad, but it's hilarious and I'll take it. Don't worry though, in game 87, I died in a similarly embarrassing way. Not sure why I'm in Salty Springs game 88, but this was a pretty cool kill. Final zone with five people left was ending up around Wailing Woods. Rest in peace, my beloved. And just like Wailing Woods, in this game, I stopped existing. Collabs might be Fortnite's entire identity nowadays, but back in the day, this was a really big deal. And yeah, I'm not a huge fan of collabs in Fortnite. I preferred when they felt special and were few and far between. Bum, 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 bum. Ah! Game 90, I rotated to Polar as always, got my materials, and got attacked by an elf who loves poking through holes. Though based on how he's playing, he's probably never poked into a hole, if you know what I mean. I killed him, and someone else decided to join the battle, but she was a lot more oblivious. The final circle pulled toward Frosty, and it was quickly a 1v1. It was an intense fight, both of us were getting shots on each other. He had very good box management skills, but sadly for him, he just couldn't escape the storm. Good to finally get a win in Frosty. Only took 90 games. That was the 30th win, and also the last win. The last 10 games don't really go too well. But you know what? That doesn't really matter. A 30 percent win rate is still crazy to me. That's like double the wins I usually get in 100 drops. I mean, there are parts in this video where I had over a 40% win rate. Frosty Flight's treating me well literally the entire time. I got three spazzes out of it this time. I don't need three spazzes, but the point is I rarely leave Frosty without insane loot. Of course, in Season 8 and beyond, the way you play Frosty is going to be a little different due to the lack of planes. But even without planes, there's still a ton of baller spawns, which means it's still a great location for mobility. My first kill in game 91 was this Lynx outside of Lucky Landing. I then made it into the final circle with three people left and was very annoying with this rocket launcher. And even though I got this pretty nice kill turning the game into a 1v1, I still didn't win. In game 92, I was bushing it up in this bot country final circle and even
even managed to pick up a kill on this calamity. But as you know, none of these games have a happy ending, so I died to move a bunch of numbers with 13 kills. Frosty was hot in game 93, and I somehow managed to pick up a kill with a scoped assault rifle. I left Frosty alive with a plane and in the process ruined this 10-year-old child's birthday party. The ice ring security didn't like that very much, so I was swiftly removed from the premises. Game 94 was short. Fatal Fields just got too fatal for me, I guess. Another kit bash game in game 95, I wear the skin when I feel bad about myself instead of going to therapy. I worked my way through a lot of deeply rooted mental problems this game, mostly by using the minigun. I may be too mentally ill to be a pilot, but that hasn't stopped many people in the past, so why should it stop me? I did put up a pretty good fight against this guy with 11 kills, but he did have 11 kills, and I am quite literally made of trash. In game 96, I was stuck in this fight with one health and wasn't even killed by the guy I was fighting. Game 97 was a little better, but not by much. Game 98, let's just get it over with. Got trapped in the storm by the most annoying player ever in game 99, but at least I killed him, so is that. We already know how this ends. I got second place. In a plane though, that's unique. And finally, it's time for game 100. I enjoyed Frosty Flights a ton, but of course game 100 had to be the most chaotic game at Frosty in a while. I mean, I showed some bus footage. It was at the end of the bus. Who are any of you people? But you know what? I'm kind of glad Frosty was contested in game 100. Even though I probably would have preferred to win it, competition at Frosty is hard to come by, and it's pretty fun. So even though I got stuck on low ground with no mats getting barraged by a soccer skin, I still had a lot of fun. And that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out a lot. My next video is probably going to take a while, but it will be another 100 drops. I want to start making more of these. Frosty Flights was fantastic. It did get kind of boring at some points, but hey, the 30% win rate kind of speaks for itself. Even though there's not a lot of action, I still really like Frosty Flights. See you in the next one.